You ready, sir? Let's go. Almost the end of July, George, for heaven's sakes. We got some baseball. Su summer's wasting away, but uh, the summer, uh, the national pastime is going to get started here, uh, well, today in about, oh, about an hour. We're going to have game number one of the season. I saw the spring training uh, game last night, and, uh, uh, you know, I mean, it was it, everybody got a chance to play, uh, you know, I... I yeah, let's not throw let's not throw the twins out with the bathwater. Oh no 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 no! <laughs> I, I was it was very interesting for me because, like I say, the starting pitcher was a guy named Homer Bailey, and Homer Bailey, well, one time was close to superstardom. He signed a great big contract with Cincinnati Reds. I'm thinking 2013, and then the whole thing kind of fell apart, and he started getting hurt and started his uh, fork that, finger fastball that, that or whatever happen. it is, you know, you know, and so. But uh, I, I think that, you know, he, he comes over from Oakland and the, at the end of last year, he was, he was hitting those corners again and doing what he can do well. But, you know, he has, he has the talent. But, oh, you know, it fades fast in that league. <laughs> so, I want to start off. The yeah. Twins are going to play 60 games. Yes. I want us to make a prediction on the number of wins. When we get to the end of September, what do we, you, you, I, I know I'm putting you on the spot. No, you ain't putting me on the spot because I'll tell you, I can give an example. <clears throat> I, they're going to play three game, four games um, uh, against uh, the White Sox. Then they have two against St. Louis, and then and then three against Cle four against Cleveland, and then they get a little bit of a break with Pittsburgh. But you know, he's, what's the what's your first nine games? Well, man, if you can pick up a game from each one of those, you're going to be lucky. And now you're already three or four games behind. And so you know, right now I was I was feeling pretty cocky about that lineup that they had going. And then you started, you know, I mean, like you say, take a look at the numbers, and it it gets a little bit different. I'm going to put a number out there for everybody. Yeah. I'm going to put out there 41 and 19. The Twins are going to go 41 and 19. They're going to win two, just a little bit better than two out of three every three, two out of every three games. Oh boy, that, that's I, a that's a, that's a big that's a big prediction. That's a that, that is a that, big that's prediction. a big number. Yeah. I'm going 41 and 19. Well, I you know I I'm I, I'm going to be a little hesitant on the number, but I do do think that they're going to win their division, okay. and, and that in itself is no small deal no no that's for sure cleveland is going to be uh, right there and and the white Sox probably won't be too far behind i don't think they were coming around uh, at the end of last season so uh I, I, they, they, it's kind of interesting because when i when i made my picks yeah. yesterday uh -huh. there was only 10 teams that were going to make the playoffs yes now when we're taping this show they just approved basically going to 16. oh i didn't know that so, the top two teams out of each division yeah. and the next two best third place teams are going to go to the playoffs, oh it sounds boy. like. So, I, I'll say it this way, if the Twins don't make the playoffs, there ought to be an investigation because they they, they will have one of the top I, records. I, 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 and, think, I think all in all, from top to bottom, they have one of the top fourth or fifth best teams in the yeah. league. And there is no reason, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, and I mean, I'll, I'll just... I'll just give this little hum nigger. You can't, we can't get worried about whether or not those big woofers are hitting the ball early. Give them a couple of weeks. But I'll tell you, by the end of August, they better be swatting that thing. I mean, last year, we were getting four and five home runs a game. We were expect we were getting most of our runs from home runs. We were expecting uh, Nelson every time he got up to swat one. I mean, huh? this, this, and, and with Donaldson, uh, that that should help. Well, and I, I think the the thing about that is, can, can I say the lineup may have gotten deeper, more home run. He <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. Our our, our crowd is uh, is enjoying themselves. It is. And uh, so no, I, with Donaldson in the lineup, it's kind of like all of a sudden with Miguel and Donaldson. And uh, and Cruz and uh, Gar, hey, you, you really got to you really got to look to see when things aren't going to work out. So. Well, you know, and I'll tell you, and I don't want I don't want to put I don't want to put any wrench into the gears here, but we have this small little problem in that uh, there may be gaps in the starting rotation, and so the key is, and I, I mean maybe this is a mathematical formula that you can how many home runs does it 
take to make up for gaps in the pitching staff? Well, last year, about 306 or 7, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was. Well, yeah, the bad news, Jake Odorizzi going on the uh, injured list today. Yes. So he's out for his first, probably first yes. couple starts where he would have been. And uh, and so we look at and say, hey, we that, that, that could hurt early on. And we'll, we'll see what the Twins decide to do. And, uh, yeah, the, fan, the crowd is getting thicker it over is. here, George. It so. is. I like that. So, uh, so who who do you got coming out of the East, the American League East? Let's let's just keep going. Uh, oh man, I tell you, I I would love to bite my tongue. Yeah. And uh, but the Yankees are the one of the yeah. Come out yeah. Of the East. Who's going to be second? Got it? Who did you did you go any further than that? Oh, I didn't go okay. any further than that. But I got the Rays. Yeah, I that would probably that would, I, I think that that would be that would be pretty close. Red Sox wouldn't surprise me, but uh, the Rays I, the Rays were it, within the top five teams. The Rays were with four or five, okay. however you want to pursue it. Twins the, in Cleveland in the Central. Twins in Cleveland in the Central. So, sounds pretty good. A's and the Astros in the West. Um, uh, I, 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 I see A's on there. That's good. That's oh, good. yeah, no, and, and the Astros. I, I'm, I, I'm going with the A's. I mean, they, that's an amazing club, the, the Oakland Athletics. And I have to admit, since Moneyball, I've often wondered, you know, I mean, because, because the, uh, uh, you know, the Twins picked, picked up Bailey for $7 million, which is, you know, cheap even by range standards it's it's um you know it, it, and so you figure you know you what do you get for seven million dollars you got a potential starting pitcher that's good for the twins what do you get well we get rid of this guy that probably was not going to be any more effective for us anymore sure. and and focus that money somewhere else i mean who knows how they're going to do it but but uh uh i think that i think that the a's are, are going to do real well there and then i'm going to tell you right then I'm picking the Twins to beat the A's, and uh, and, the and Yankees. win the American League and, and go to the World Series and go to the World Series. Well, I got the Twins or the Rays going to the World Series. That's that is that is my prediction because uh, here's the thing. I'm amazed the, the, that you got that. That's the, that's fantastic. The proposal for this 16-team playoff yeah. is that the eight teams are going to play each other in a three-game series. So you start looking at this, there could be some upsets, some teams. Early on, could get upset. You know, one of those big dogs. All of a sudden, everybody's talking about the Yankees uh, as being the, the, the one. The Yankees are going to lose one of these days, it, and it, uh, you know, and the Twins. You know, they haven't had su su such luck with playoffs. That could change. Yeah. And and who's to say some of these pitching and, and any other and teams they that they might the have Yankees, a run? I'll give them. I'll give them a chance. If they got to play the Yankees, I don't like. I don't know if I like the the possibilities. So well, I, I'm going to tell you right now that starting lineup for for the Minnesota Twins. Looks like the remake of Murderer's Row. Yeah. Yeah, they, 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 these these guys are such heavy hitters, and if they can keep them all healthy without breaking anything for a while, I mean, 60 games. Hey, you can do that anytime. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But at the same time, somebody could get hurt, and you lose them basically for the season too. Yeah. What used to be part of a season now could be the whole season. So, okay. somebody was talking about the Astros the other day, and that they're getting they're going to get to avoid the 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 carnage that they should that they should get. For doing what they did, the the, the, the yeah, cheating and, and everything so, else, there's going to be no fans in the stands to jeer them and whatever else. And so that's one thing that I don't like about no fans in the stands. But hey, what do you do? No, and somebody says that's okay. They're still going to pay, and they should. <laughs> and so you know, it's it's um, in that type of thing. Just really, you know, it shouldn't be allowed. If at least if you're going to do it, do it in a fashion that's that's a little more subtle. <laughs> I'm telling you, sometimes they pick up each other's signs. I just know they do. I've heard, they, they, I've heard they, tell us they, some really classic ways of doing it, um, but uh, electronically with people analyzing afterwards, nah, you can do better than that. Out of the National League, uh, the East, I got the Braves and the Nationals. Yes. That sounds good. Yes, it I've does. Got, I've got the Cards and the Reds coming out of the Central. That's very good, and, and I got the Reds finishing up on that I was that surprised one. how many teams had, or how many pro, 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 people who picked these things. I can't yeah. say that word. Why? I don't know. It's got me all tongue-tied, so I won't even try again. Uh, had the Reds winning after being the bottom feeders for yes. so long. The Reds uh, sitting out on top. Somehow. Some way the Cardinals will find a way. Jay Bartkowski, you're welcome. I I know you 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 you're, you're going to be happy yeah. that I said that. And then out of the West, of course, the Dodgers and the uh, Diamondbacks, Arizona. Uh, I'll make uh, the pick for those two, and then 
I got the Dodgers coming out of the out of the National League. Well, you know, I'm telling you right now, in Boston, they're still hanging their head. Yesterday, they, some people in Boston had the delusions that Mookie was going to go to Los Angeles, spend the next two or three months, and then come back to Boston. Sorry. Well, yeah, that's not going to happen. That is not happening. That, yeah. that, that's that's a big number. That We've is, been talking about big numbers on this show. This yes. Mookie for 12 years for 365 million, 65 million dollar signing 12, bonus, so and a lot of what they call new money. And this is, you know, right. this isn't, you know, incentive plans type thing. You so, know, but I'll tell you what, that's only the second largest contract. <laughs> Yeah, I got Mike Trout on my uh, on my uh, fantasy team, and he said I'm playing baseball. Yes, I, I might take a few days off when my kid's born in August. Yes. you should do that, Mike. But then uh, make sure that my fantasy team wins every week. That's your job. So thank you very much. Yeah, you know, and people always says, you know, well, is Mike Trout the best baseball player in the world? Uh, yeah, well, until somebody else comes along, probably he yeah, he is just yeah, he he kind of. He just kind of does everything, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Makes it look pretty simple out in center field. Yeah. Hits the ball kind of well. Hits it a long way. Yeah, he does. He does a lot of things. Does a lot of things well. So the uh, Twins uh, start with. Uh, oh, who's going to win the World Series then? Sorry, before we get too far. Well, you know, and 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 I, I guess maybe it's a throwback to '65. Ah. But I just sat back and I the thought, Dodgers you and know, the Twins. Wouldn't that 55 be? 55 years later. Wouldn't that be fun? That would be pretty fun. You know, and it's just, it, it can happen. I'm telling you right now, it's been almost that, I mean, it's been almost that long since the Gophers were at the Rose Bowl, but somebody told me that one day that could happen, and I could be alive to see it. That'd fact, be good. If, I'd, if like, I'm alive, I'd like to see that you be alive and that happen, George. I really would. Yeah. I, I don't, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to live forever. Just in the, maybe they could do that in the next 10 years would be really That'd be awesome. really good. That'd be really good. Yeah, because the see, I'd go. Because you're going to, you're going to, you're, you're <laughs> You're gonna be around at least ten more years, George. We we I got I got you I got a betting line on the over under ten. <laughs> That's good. Ten. I like the bet. <laughs> <laughs> running running so, three to five. Barrios uh, gets the start tomorrow night for the Twins uh, on Friday does. night he for the does. Twins. Uh, no shocker there. Uh, it's gonna be interesting with with Odorizzi with the injury. Now how how do they you know we think they got some starting pitchers but are we all of a sudden gonna see a, a a reliever game where the relievers start come on through? And uh, you know whatever they do, so um, we'll see. I, I got all kinds of trust in, in Badelli, and, and he'll he'll take care of business. Well, I tell you what, their number one right now concern is uh, Lucas Giolito, and and if you remember last fall, he came to Minnesota and chewed up the Twins, scattered three hits, uh, um, struck out twelve, and and walked away with. A win that the Twins could have seriously huh? used at the time, and so. But the next time they play, which a couple of weeks later, he got beat. Yeah. But this kid can throw. I mean, really, really hard. I've seen some pictures of him. He can really throw hard, and and people have been whispering that he's found himself a slider and a curveball. Well. And so you add that with a what 95, 97 mile an hour fastball. Uh, he he's he's got a lot of trinkets to throw at you. Yeah, so it should be fun to watch. It really should. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, maybe sitting in the chair yes. and, uh, and watching a little of the Twins game tomorrow night. I'll see about tonight. I, you know, I don't. I don't really want to watch the Yankees. I don't want to watch ESPN. No, drool but I'm going to tell you. I'm, I'm going to get me... home, and there's going to be um, Washington and the Yankees, and I don't want to watch the Yankees, but. Max Scherzer is going to be pitching for for I'm Washington, here. and Cole's pitching for the Yankees, and Tony Fauci's throwing out the first pitch. I got that recording, so at least so I can see So in case we're here too long, the show goes a little longer than normal, at least you got that going for you, At least right? I got that going for me. Got that. Yeah. And yeah. then the late game tonight, the Dodgers and the Giants, of course, you don't really need to, uh, as they say, you don't have to have anything really in the basket to get people uh, upset and about whatever. That about one? that we. Because that's yeah. happened in the past, we don't really need to dredge that no. up. But, uh, yeah, it. Uh, well, you it, can, it'll yeah, be I, interesting. I, historically, I take a look and think, the New York Giants and the New York, uh, the Brooklyn Dodgers. I mean, uh, this was crazy in the '40s and the yeah, '50s before absolutely. those things down there. They were they they lived across the tracks and they and and they hated each other. It was a, it was an amazing competitive sport. 
Hey, you talked about Homer Bailey a few minutes ago, and we failed yeah. to mention that he gave up three ding-dongs in the uh, first three innings last night to the Cubs. And uh, uh, I'm going to tell you, those Cubs are not very nice people. <laughs> they they took full advantage of of his hanging, whatever it was. Yeah. <laughs> but he hung a few and and they they and put them into the empty seats or the advertising did. seats. And one was way up. So yeah, they they put the SWAT to him. Uh, it was good to see Homer, and it's good to see him in a Twins uniform, and I. I hope that he stays there for a while. Stay with baseball for a little bit here. Couple of local notes. Uh, the 19U baseball team uh, last uh, Friday. Got to find my notes here. The last went to Aurora last Friday and lost a uh, game five to two. They were supposed to go to Hibbing on Tuesday and got canceled for some reason. Not sure why. And uh, but they do play at home on Saturday afternoon at Sheila Field Ooh. at 1:30 and 3:30 a doubleheader with uh, against Proctor. And uh, the guy who's watching us munching on his popcorn over there, he might even be umping. I don't know. Oh, he really? is umping. He is All right. Umping. So it should we... only be about 100 degrees. And... <laughs> it's going to be. Can you wear a Panama hat? <laughs> so we'll, uh, we'll we, we, maybe on uh, Saturday afternoon get out and uh, watch a little local baseball. And then uh, Wyatt Ulrich out there with the uh, Bismarck Larks, Mr. Lark. Through 17 games, he's, he's only batting 365. Ooh. Only. And, a, a week ago, he was batting 404. So, uh, dropping off here a little bit, but uh, next week we'll, we'll record this show on Thursday again because Friday I'm leaving for Bismarck. I'm going to go watch the baseball. I figured you probably were, yeah. So, uh, I'm driving out there and I'm going to go watch White, hopefully, get to uh, take in three games, and hopefully, we'll get to see him play at least two of those three games. That'd be great. And uh, oh, you'd go like out that. and uh, take my daughter with me. We'll go watch a little baseball and, uh, and uh, enjoy uh, that trip. So, uh, White, we're coming out there. We'll, we'll see you then. So, where do you want to go next? I just want to mention, as long as we had gone through those starting rotation, there was another one on there, Rich Hall, an interesting guy. He's 40 years old. He's recovering from an elbow injury. He has had a lonesome journey, including to an independent league a couple of years ago. Uh, but he's kind, of, uh, he's kind of an old guy that's reinvented himself. But over the last four years, he's gone 30 and 16 for with the with the Dodgers, and uh, I, I, whether or not he's had enough time to heal, you know, you know, I guess 40 year olds take a little longer. Who's to say? But he's the other probable starting pitcher that they have going right now, and he should be interesting. I'd like I, I, it'll be interesting to see him on the mound. Yep. And I did not go into the into the the relief pitchers, but you know. I think they're going to be all right there. Let's hope so. Yeah. Let's hope so. Let's yeah. see uh, what happens. Where do you want to go next? You want to go football, basketball, hockey? You know, I'll tell lacrosse? you what. I, where, where I, do you want I, to go next? I would not at all. Um, uh, going a little football, I, I, just a couple of notes, and I'm yeah. not sure we covered this before, but what yeah. I, I want to talk about Blaze Andrews. He's probably the best lineman that the Gophers had. And he's been, he's been tossed on the Outland Trophy, awarded to the best lineman in the country. Right now, he's in the fourth or fifth range. He's from Marshall. He's played in 26 straight games, Tim. And you know this, but he's played 12 games at right guard, 10 games at left guard, two games at right tackle, and two games at left tackle. This is, this is a beautiful offensive asset for the coach to have. They, they, they had a trivia question, uh, Gopher Football on Twitter had a trivia question the yeah. other day, and they asked how many positions on the line has he played already? Yeah. And I'm like, well, I don't, how would you even, where would you even go? So I said five not before they posted the answer, because I thought, well, oh, heck, if you're posting something like that, but four is the answer. Four is the answer. Four is the answer, so. And I remember a couple of times, you know, those tackles, those big tackles would, would, would get hurt, and, and they'd, they'd move them over, but, you know, I mean, you take a look at this guy, he is true football player. Uh, you know, 315 pounds and moves really well. We like well. a Minnesota boy that stays at home. That's the Minnesota boy that stays <laughs> at home. But I got another one to talk about. Huh? And this is um, um, Boyamafi. Yeah. Boyamafi's a defensive lineman. Okay, 6'4", 260. He is put on the freak <laughs> watch list. The freak watch list is, a, is, is <laughs> it determines some of the best athletes in sports. So he, what's, 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 his, what's his athleticism? Well, just listen to this. Um, he has a 40 and a half inch vertical jump. Here's a guy, 6'4", 260 pounds that can touch the back, the top of the backboard in the gym, okay? Not too shabby. 
He runs uh, um, a 4.5740, uh, a standing long jump of 10 feet 6 inches. He can power clean 400 and squat, squats 353. Now, I'm, I'm thinking as an opposing lineman or opposing lineman coach and instructing your lineman, how do you block him? And I'm thinking, tough. Yeah, tough, yeah, yeah. Tough you job. get the ball, get rid of the ball in a hurry if he's pass rushing, right? Yeah, he's going to get there quickly. And, and then the other thing is say, don't worry, there'll be a couple of other guys to help. No, I, I, I am really going to keep a close eye on this kid. I think that he might be one of the best defensive linemen when they're done. Um, as they've ever had, and, and Andres, the big thing about him is, you know, keeping him around because this guy is truly, truly a blue chipper. Uh, uh, st staying with the football, yeah. uh, we, we, I got a bad news tweet right before we uh, before we started recording uh -oh. the uh, show. The uh, the NFL and the uh, Players Association, they're right, not, not on close. the same page. No, they're not. And uh, things don't uh, look very good. They're talking that they might pull the players from reporting to training camp while everybody was kind of supposed to be in by Monday. They're talking about the they mm -hmm. might uh, they might have a, a lockout type uh, situation. The rookies the players, went in today. Uh, what's that? The rookies went in today. The rookies were supposed to go in today and uh, for the Vikings, but it sounds like uh, the the number of preseason games that we thought had gone to zero yeah. has not officially been agreed upon. Uh, the economics, the compensation for how this stuff is all going to work out, whether they play or don't play, has not been finalized, so uh, the NFL, uh, everybody kind of thought it was going to be a go. Uh, it looked like everything was uh, happy, go lucky, but uh, all of a sudden we may have some strife uh, in the NFL. So, uh, yeah, like I said, uh, and of course, uh, sticking with that, Zimmer signed a new contract. Uh, what yesterday? Like last yeah, night? He, he, sometime? Yeah, they, they didn't tell what his what his contract uh, terms were, but you got to take a look. Here he is. He's 57 and 30, 38, one loss and one tie. He's made the playoffs three times. He's won two NFC titles, and with the exception of two two wins and three losses in playoff games. But and that was the criticism of him. He can't win the big game. So what does he do? He goes into New Orleans, stomps those guys, and then he went to San Francisco and got killed. And everybody's mad at him again. Yeah, you can't get mad at yeah. him for getting killed in San Francisco. Eh? I got beat up there once myself. It's. Uh, <laughs> I didn't realize. I thought that was a peaceful city. No? What? Uh, San Francisco is not a peaceful city? Well, it is, but not where <laughs> I was hanging out at the time. You know, I was, I was a sailor once. Um, uh, I don't want to go there. Wow. Yeah. But, you know, I think Zimmer is a great coach. I think he has, you know, um, a kind of the old world concept. Uh, he's got to be a lot easier to be around than Bill Belichick um, or some of the rest of those guys. I mean, hey, they're, they're a little bit over the top. That's how they do so well. But uh, he's, he, you know, Zimmy's <laughs> going to do real well, and he's got a team to do it if they let him play. You know, here, here's the thing, you got, and you got to think about this. Only one coach per year wins the Super Bowl. Okay, so yep. let's think about that. There's been 54 Super Bowls, and some coaches have won multiple. Bill Belichick, blah, 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 uh, other coaches. So when you think, when it gets right down to it, there's only a handful of coaches who have won Super Bowls. And everybody's t saying, well, Zimmer can't win the big game, can't get to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Well, hey folks, a one out of 16 teams in the NFC, one out of 16 on the AFC makes the Super Bowl, and only one of those two teams wins it all. So, uh, you know, the thing about it is, his players play for him. I think, for the most part, the, the players want to play for him. And I don't think you can say that about every coach in the NFL that have that, that ability to get to get millionaires to come play for you. And I think that's one of the things that he's got going for him. So um, I'd like to think that, uh, that I, I think it's a good signing. I, I, I know there's going to be people, oh, I people think out great. there who are going to disagree with me, no. but I, I just think it's uh, I think it's the right thing. No, I, I've always been a Zimmy fan. And, uh, you know, the, the key is, of course, as any head coach knows, it's the staff that you have. And that that's the one that gets the job done. But on the sidelines, he always seems to, to have something under control in terms of his offense and his defensive coordinators. He knows what's going on and, and he lets them do their work. I, I appreciate that about the guy and, you know. And I think, I think he's got a team now, what, what the, what, how many years has it been now, three, four years? I think he's got the team kind of where he wants it. I think he's got a lot of his guys in yes. there. And yes. So 
yeah, if it doesn't happen in the next couple of years, you know, he's 63 years old and uh, he's not uh, not not getting any younger. It's a it's a young man's game too. It and, is, and we'll see what happens. So yes, they did decide for the NFL, and of course, I think this is another thing that they are worried about. But the players are going to be tested every day for the first two weeks that they're in camp, and then every other day until the rate is under five percent of the players being tested positive. And I'm kind of like. Well, if the rate's five percent, that that's not gone. That's a. I don't know if they'll get above that number. So, um, but you know, we we've been talking about these players going to going to restaurants, going to wherever they they're they're going to get exposed to things, and so they. I understand why they're doing what they're doing, but yeah, testing every day and getting things done in a hurry is going to be one of those things that they're, they're, they're going to see happen. So. Well, I tell you what, I think baseball's setting the pace right now, and if they can pull this off. And I mean, there's a lot of ifs, but if they can pull this off, ooh, everybody else is going to start following lead. And uh, you know, but one thing, one thing that should be cautioned is the guy says, just because we can do this, should we be doing this? And that's the that's question we have question. to ask. And, but look at us, we're all we're pretty ravenous to get some sports going. Te Texas uh, high school football gets delayed a month. A month. They were supposed to start August 3rd. Uh, they are going to start their first preseason practices like September 7th, which I believe is Labor Day if I remember right. So Texas is moving back a month. California is taking their football yes. season and moving it to December or January, January. for a start yeah. uh, for their possible season. But then you look at some of these other uh, states, i.e. North Dakota, Wisconsin just announced yesterday that they are turning the lights on. They're going for it. Uh, Michigan, Pennsylvania, uh, some of these uh, states have said we're gonna we're gonna put our sports out there for now, and uh, let it go. And of course, Minnesota, the governor announced the the mask mandate uh, that's gonna start on Saturday, and uh, so there was a provision in that thing for how schools would have to respond if they are in session, and uh, so. There was also about how athletics would be going forward and what would have to be done to do those kinds of things. So I have to say I was a little more hopeful, a little more hopeful that maybe, maybe we'll be in school, but I maybe we'll get to play some sports, maybe not forever. Uh, but that decision is going to officially come August 4th. That's uh, that's what was decided. So I believe that's Tuesday the 4th, I think, is, is the uh, day. Uh, that the state high school league is going to make their announcement and say this is what we're doing the school thing is going to come out on the 30th that's next thursday a week from today uh, we'll find out what the school is going to look like and uh, uh, what form or fashion or our school district is going to get to decide for themselves or are they going to go statewide with a decision and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens and a lot lot will be a lot will be determined we'll have no whole lot more in the next couple of weeks george and, for me, it's about time because I am tired of not knowing. Yeah, well, I, you guys, your guys are starting to put time and effort into it, and so are the kids. Yeah, we and started, this is, started some football practice yeah. this week. Had yeah. very good numbers uh, the first yeah. night. Twenty-nine kids uh, the first night, and of course, uh, baseball and other sports uh, having practices as well. So, uh, but good, good uh, energy out on the football field. So it's been encouraging to see what. Uh, what the what the kids have been doing? Actually, I talked to a couple of parents yesterday about it, and uh, and uh, mentioned it up. And I suppose he's out. In, oh yeah, he's out there. They're they're enjoying it, and uh, you know, and their their kids about six foot four. And I start thinking, you know, uh, Broncos are going to be all right this year. <laughs> they get a chance to play. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll we'll see what happens. Yes. yes so yes. Uh, well, where do you want to go next? Okay, I, you know, it's just a short story. Short story? Uh, I like those. A short story about life in the bubble, the NBA <laughs> bubble. Life in the bubble. Life in the bubble. Now, what did we find, life in the bubble? And the guy's name is Bol Bol. Bol Bol. This is Minute Bol's that, that, son. That is, that's kind of easy to remember, by it the way. It is. B-O-L, B-O-L. And, and when they announce his name, on, on, uh, announce it, they Bol! Ball and it's just like, wow, you can't quite miss that. So, yeah. he's he's a rookie with the Nuggets. He's he's seven foot two. The old man was about seven six. Yeah. Um, but in this game, he had 16 points, 10 blocks, uh, 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 six blocks, 10 boards. He's got a three pointer that won't 
won't. How do you? I saw. Do, I uh, saw the three pointer. I just. How do you stop that? You, you don't. Know, you get close. Get close to the body, you, you, or what do, you, what do you? What do you do? You pray that he misses it. And that wasn't his. That wasn't his forte. How he handles the ball. Yeah, he sh he showed some uh, some dribbling aspects that were well, kind of kind of fun. Well, on top of that, you know, he's got he's got an arm reach of of over nine feet. Nine and a half feet, or some ridiculous thing, and the legs that, that match those arms. I counted the steps, slowed it down, and counted, <laughs> and 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 I got to nine and a half, and he was getting the ball at the free throw line. He took one more, and just an incredible slam. So he's 20 years old. Uh, I, you know, last year I started watching professional basketball because of Zion, because he was really fun to watch. Yeah. Well. I tell you what, you know, uh, the beat goes on and these kids keep on coming on and this this one's a real phenomena and you know, he's got the charisma, he's uh, he's smiling all the time, he's enjoying his life and you know, I always remembered the old man Manute Bull, what made him different from anybody in the NBA? Anybody. He's the only one that killed a lion with a spear and that's where that's where Manute Bull came from Africa. He's a, <laughs> he's a kid, that's how he became a man, you know. Around here we have uh, we have different deals, but anyway, he's 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 got this type of thing in sports. Bowl bowl is going to be great. This is my prediction. Okay, okay. bowl I, bowl. I, I I I you know we'll, we'll we'll see what happens when when they when they turn on the lights for real. Will they will they will they shut them down and what will happen? So NBA looked pretty good in the bubble. Uh, they weren't having any positive tests. They finally had one guy I see yeah. that tested positive the other day, and uh, so things. Things seem to be going in the right direction. They'll get started with basketball, I think, on Tuesday, I think, if I remember right. The NBA gets started with, like, six games, I think, they've got that first day there. They kind of oh. slam jamming them in there. I think they got three courts, and they're going to get them going and, and, and play some games. So that gets started on Tuesday. And uh, the Lynx, staying with the basketball, uh, they'll get started on Sunday. Here's, here, here's something interesting. All 22 of the Lynx's games will be televised. Wow, that's either different. through ESPN, ESPN2, CBS Sports Network, or FSN. All 22 of their games will be televised this year. So, uh, if we think about that, uh, no, it's okay. Uh, that 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 somebody, I think it was Marnie Gilner said, well, it only took a pandemic for it to happen. Yeah, that all their games were to be finally be televised. And so, uh, good luck to them. Uh, they might they might do okay. We'll see what happens down there uh, as they're down in Orlando as well. So. Uh, I think that wraps up the uh, the uh, basketball portion of the show. You want to go soccer or golf next? Yeah, you better talk about. I, I, you know, I'll tell you. I watched a little bit of the soccer match. Yeah. It was so incredibly hot down there. I started sweating. <laughs> I just watching Why? this. You know, and you can feel like, the heat. On you your can TV feel that it was bad. And 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 you look at them, and it, everything was drenched. I've been the I've been to Florida in the summertime. It's not that much fun. And uh, it's uh, yeah, you know, yeah. but so that. But I did watch him, and uh, and I think uh, I think the United team popped out ahead, didn't they? They ended up getting a tie two a to tie two, two, and uh, they I, they were I was I was reading through the Twitter this morning and kind of flipping through, and there were a few there were a few people out there that was hoping that uh, Heath, with the head coach, was going to make a few substitutions a little earlier than he did with the heat and everything, and uh, ended up maybe costing them a goal that ended up, but they were in, they were in the playoffs, and I think that's all they do, but they get Columbus uh, from the other side of the uh, bracket. Columbus played three games on there, won by a combined score of seven to nothing. Oh boy. So everybody's worried that the, uh, that the uh, loons will go out quickly, but uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I watched a good portion of it last night. Uh, I got home, missed about the first half hour. I got home a little after ten, and and uh, made the end of the game, and was hoping that they'd pull something off, but uh, just didn't work out that way. So take a two-two tie against uh, Colorado, and again they'll play Tuesday, and of course the 3M uh, golf tournament, PGA's down in the cities. Yep, and, big time. Uh, we talked a little bit last week about these big hitters, these long hitters, and I mentioned last week that Dustin Johnson had gone 80 on Friday after he'd gone 80 on Thursday. I know I didn't say that last week, but uh, I read about that. Uh, he, he, he did a 76 today and withdrew. Uh, with the back issues, it sounds like, but uh, uh, DJ uh, took, him, took himself right out of the tournament, so there's one big name out of the... Uh, out of the tournament, tournament down there, but uh, we'll see what happens this weekend, and maybe uh, I'll have. It would be nice, you know, if 
if they were actually having fans there, because then you could maybe look for somebody that you might yes, know. Yes, yes. But uh, nonetheless, we'll uh, we'll see what happens and uh, with the with the golf, and hopefully, uh, hopefully they have a good weekend. It sounds like it's going to be plenty warm. I think it's going to be plenty warm. So, one more thing, we got to talk hockey. It's that time, huh? Well, it's that time, but we we got a we got a new team name. Seattle, you know, not not this coming season, yeah, and not the season, the new season coming up, okay. But in twenty one, twenty two, so go a year and a couple okay. of months out, we're gonna get a thirty second NHL franchise, and it's gonna be in Seattle. Uh, you know that that's that's and been kind of rumored for a while. It's they announced it a long time. They took a year to come up with the nickname. What's it? What you make a guess? Uh, make a guess. The Northwesters. No. Well, not the Northeasters. I not mean, the Northeasters, yeah. no, no. But it does have to do with. Um, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you a hint: an animal in the water. Um, uh, that would that would be an orca. Wow. Oh, well, you got one later. They are the Seattle Kraken. The Kraken. Oh, the Kraken. you're going that way back. So they 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 came out with that today. They announced it at 11 o'clock our time. Oh, I it like was, that. Was yeah. They they said they went with. You know the Minnesota Wild yes. was, is one of the few teams that doesn't end in an S. You know yes. Vikings, Twins, blah blah blah. They wanted a name that didn't end in an S, so that was one of the things that they wanted. They had talked about going. Uh, the uh, Seattle had had a baseball team many many years ago that were called the Metropolitans, and that had big consideration until Gary Bettman said we really don't want to change the name of the Metropolitan Division, so that kind of got squashed a little bit. But uh, they, they came out with a logo. Uh, you got a Kraken that kind of looks like an S for Seattle. Oh, yeah, Kraken. And uh, the whole nine yards. Yeah, that'll be and good. they've got their colors are blue, navy blue, and red. No white. So they, they thought they got a pretty interesting color scheme. Trying to stay away from the other teams that are already in Seattle, trying to try to be unique. So they, were, uh, they spent a lot of bucks making, uh, making this happen. And uh, I don't know if you remember the name Ron Francis, I who do. played with the Hartford Whalers yeah, amongst yeah, other yeah, teams. Yeah. He's actually part of the uh, team, part of the franchise, and he's he was part of the committee that was on there deciding the name and the color scheme and everything. And he basically said in this article uh, that I read that we wanted something that a player could be proud to put that sweater on when he goes out on the ice. And he said, "Are this." This has done that. The Kraken should do it. Yeah. The Kraken should do the job. And so, uh, you know, are they? Uh, is Detroit going to have to stop throwing octopi onto the uh, <laughs> ice because now the uh, the Kraken are going to have that uh, to their name? Anyway, Hard it's going to be say. interesting. It, it's going to be fun, uh, an interesting name. And so, uh, well, sp it, speaking of good nicknames, my T-shirt, the Clam Eaters, the Pawtucket the Clam Eaters, Clam Eaters from Pawtucket. You know, and, and, and you know, this is a little known team, but they, they do real well in, on the East Coast. And, and of course, uh, they're clam eaters. So, you know, let's go clam eaters. Let's go. It, it's, it, it works. <laughs> here we go, clam here, eaters. Here, here, here we go. go. Boop, boop. And so I, I, I got this. The problem of it is this is from, this is from 1895, and most of these guys are gone now. But, uh, um, but I'll tell you what, the clam eaters. See, you're not offending anybody there, but the clams. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, works out pretty well for you. I gotta give one shout out to uh, my uh, would be my wife's uncle, uh, Charlie Karasik, uh, passed away today oh. at the age. I'm not sure if he made his 101st birthday wow. recently. I think he turned 101 in June, uh, but he's definitely had his 100th birthday party last summer. But uh, Charlie passed away this morning, and uh, 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 God bless him. He was uh, I, 101. Th that's a celebration. Th th think about this now. When when I started going to school, he he used he's a logger, and he drove school bus. So he'd get up in the morning, go do a little logging, and then jump in the school bus and then go do all of the rest of the stuff and then get back in the school bus. And so when I was a kid, Charlie was pretty old. You know, you, you thought yeah. it was pretty old then. He was probably in his mid fifties, but uh, Charlie drove bus for uh, old TM for, for many years. And uh, he, he just uh, one of those uh, tough old guys and uh, uh, always a smile on the face and a, a dip of Copenhagen uh, in the lip. And uh, just, uh, just a great guy. So uh, 
saddened to hear uh, my condolences to, to his family who uh, we, we know everybody obviously a small town but uh, uh, a shout out to Charlie and uh, a Godspeed to him because uh, he, he, he did he did a good tour right here on the earth so, yeah uh, 101 uh, there's nothing the matter with that yeah you know uh, if you make it to 100 or 101 you you you, you, you were blessed that's right and uh, so so uh, anyway I, I gotta give that shout out what have you been reading oh you know I'll tell you what I just I just got a brand new book and it's called um, uh, it's about it's, it's about the army of liberation that went into the south for the Civil War and it's written by a lady named um, Elizabeth Yvonne and I had not read her books before but I started it last night intermixing, intermixing the twins game sure. and all of a sudden I found myself today um, having to close it up so I could write down a little script so I knew <laughs> what I was going to talk about but sure. you know there was there's there's been other things going on in my life like like music and that's what I uh oh I got up that's what's in the bag I that's was what's wondering. in the bag you know it's just I couldn't sleep another night thinking that Eli lived in a house that didn't have a copy of of uh, oh, Tom Petty's greatest hits <laughs> and I know and I know he didn't have that because a year ago that was never on vinyl. But you just got your turntable, and I just uh, got so, my turntable. So this, this, this is uh, wow. Can, this is for Eli and the turntable. I he he will uh, he will love it. Uh, we he he probably isn't up in the morning when I turn the turntable on when I'm taking my shower and whatever else. But I do. Ha I, I will share this story as long as you brought up Eli. I got to go back to my youth when Eli was, I was about Eli's age, and my mom bought me a, an LP called Ernie's Greatest Hits from oh, Ernie yes, and Bert sure. from Sesame Street. And on there was a thing called Ernie's Tiger Hunt. And so you're supposed to use your imagination and you, we climb up a hill and we swim through a river and then we're in the jungle. So I took Eli downstairs last week and I said, I got I to gotta share this with you. Well, we went through the whole thing when we're running in the basement and we're climbing trees in the whole nine yards and we got to the end and, and got back to the house and, you know, the, the song comes or the, the, the story comes to an end and he's like, can we do it again? And I'm like, that's real easy, buddy. All you got to do is lift up the thing and set her back down right on the album. We got to do it again. So Oh, yeah, he will, he'll uh, like that. He will love it. Uh, thank you very much. I will. He will. He will love that, uh, that this is his. So. Oh, no, it. yeah, yeah you, you, like I say. You got to have an album or two of to get Tom to, Petty. To, I took my daughter when she was 16 years old to a Tom Petty concert. It was one of the most enjoyable times I've ever had. Sure. And we had great seats, and there she is. And she was she was sitting next to a bunch of college guys that thought she was kind of cute, and we're spitting over. And I says, "How come you didn't come over and sit with sit by us? I didn't want them to know you were my dad." <laughs> And so I, I realized right off the bat that my little girl, but it was at a Tom Petty concert. Things like that happen, you know. Those things just, do happen they, they at do those happen. kinds of concerts. Yeah, yeah, so. they do. We're going to shoot for Thursday at 5 o'clock next week, tentatively. So, my, uh, like my I said, I, open. Fr Friday I'm, uh, I'm looking to get out of town. But uh, Thursday we got football practice, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So Thursday seems like... Hey, we'll have sports to talk about. And we'll have twins to talk about. Yes. And uh, the Lynx will have a few games underneath their belts and... Uh, Wow, it, 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 it's finally happening. It, we're we're, we're going to get back. It to is finally. I'm I, I'm getting paid for. Uh, I'm I'm getting my money back for the Minneapolis Tribune for the sports page because before it was you know this long. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, today was eight pages long. I'm eight, like, eight, holy smokes! The Minneapolis sports page, eight pages. They hasn't. It 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 will get busier. Yes. Anything else? I uh, can't think of anything, guys. Thanks, hey, guys. Anything else you want to talk about? This is. Yeah. Always got something to talk about. Well, throw it at us. What do you want? What do you want to talk about besides my great, uh, my great football the skills? Super hands. So Maybe we could just play some catch instead. There, you, <laughs> there you go. Anything else, George? No. Hey, tell my friends out there. You know where you are. Uh, both of you uh, have a good time. Wear your mask, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody. On camera. On camera. Oh, we're gonna throw the football around oh. on camera. Look at this! Well, I'm gonna go throw a beer around. <laughs> <laughs>